Staying on top of developing news, the effect of the coronavirus pandemic is now hitting our dinner plates. Several meat production plants in the U.S. are temporarily closed, leading to a meat shortage in some areas of the U.S. But what about here in Idaho? Well, CBS 2 Sarah Jacobson reached out to national grocery stores and our local meat packing plants with what you can expect the next time you go shopping. While some local food stores are showing a limited supply of meat, others are rationing. Costco is allowing only three packages of meat per shopper. We reached out to Costco's national headquarters and here's what they had to say. Quote, Costco has implemented limits on certain items to help ensure more members are able to purchase merchandise they want or need. Our buyers and suppliers are working hard to provide essential high demand merchandise as well as everyday favorites. So before you rush out to stock up on meat, don't. While Costco is temporarily limiting fresh meat to a total of three items per member for beef, pork, and poultry products, they say this shortage is temporary and they're already working with suppliers and buyers to meet our local needs. Fred Meyer, owned by Kroger and headquartered in Cincinnati, their director of corporate affairs says they are also adding limits to the amount of meat you can purchase. Quote, at Fred Meyer, we feel good about our ability to maintain a broad assortment of meat and seafood for our customers because we purchase protein from a diverse network of suppliers. There is plenty of protein in the supply chain. However, some processors are experiencing challenges. At this time, we've added temporary purchase limits on fresh chicken, pork, and ground beef to ensure all customers continue to have access to these products, end quote. As far as our meat supply here locally, we've reached out to the Idaho Beef Council, Agribeef, as well as local meat packing plants who have yet to respond. Sarah Jacobson, CBS 2 News. Over the skies of New Orleans, Houston, Dallas, Blue Angels flyovers serve as a thank you to healthcare workers for National Nurses Week. I'm highly blessed, highly in awe. Um, can't believe it's happening. Nurse of 40 years, Maria Arvano, joining others at the White House Wednesday to meet the president as he signs a proclamation to mark the day. The trip to Washington brings a well-deserved, if only brief, break from their often exhausting work. The emergency room can go from uh, basically a nice slow volume to all of a sudden you feel like you're watching a, uh, a movie or a TV. This can't be real. Among the many retired nurses nationwide who left retirement to return to work is Marty Blankenship. But I'm not going to retire till the COVID is gone. Blankenship and her colleagues are at times overwhelmed. For other healthcare workers, though, the pandemic has brought their work to a halt. Many laid off or furloughed as canceled elective procedures and non-emergency visits put a stop to revenue. In my personal case, um, our you know physicians and founders are doing like everything they can to keep as many people employed, um, but you know there's only so much that we can do. Hurting hospitals already in economic distress before the pandemic. A study by the Chartist Center for Rural Health found 2019 to be the single worst year for rural hospital closures in a decade. Unfortunately, it has kind of led to, you know, business economic problems, and that's the case everywhere. I mean, even with these big hospitals. When it comes to direct aid for hospitals, the Department of Health and Human Services is sending $12 billion to facilities with a large amount of COVID-19 patients and another $10 billion to rural hospitals, all coming from a fund created by the CARES Act. At the White House, I'm Atrel Nashar. In our new series, The New Normal, we're highlighting how the pandemic is changing life here in the Treasure Valley. CBS 2's Erica Lee shows us how restaurants are handling the process of reopening. As local restaurants in the Treasure Valley open back up after the pandemic, some say that they are still taking precautions. Restaurants like Idaho Pizza Company say they are excited to get back to normal and will be following city guidelines. Yeah, well, we have been doing contactless delivery for a while now, um, and we're opening the lobby with like certain numbers of people on the 16th. Everything's the same except the lobby will be limited to so many people, and obviously the tables will be separated. 
Creek says business has been down about 50% since COVID-19 hit and that they will be doing extra cleaning to prepare for the reopening. Other restaurants, however, are taking a different approach. But Kay's French restaurant says they respect the governor's decision to reopen, but they still want to take a more conservative approach. We have elected to hold off reopening. The dates um, that I think we're allowed to is uh, May 16th, and we've elected to hold off until at least June 1st. Um, Business has been good enough that we don't feel that we necessarily need to reopen immediately. So we'd rather just wait. But Kay says even if they did open, she's not sure consumer confidence is where it needs to be and that people would come anyway. No fault on anybody else if they decide to open when it's allowed. We're just simply not ready. Erica Lee, CBS 2 News. New at four, one of the main gathering spots in the Treasure Valley is the Village at Meridian, and it's definitely ramping up. Stores are opening back up. CBS 2's Brian Morn tells us what you can expect when you venture out. The Village at Meridian, lots of shops and entertainment, but the coronavirus has shut most of it down. Well, it, it, it's been difficult because it's it's all unknown. You know, I've opened a lot of shopping centers, um, had you know, created a lot of plans to, uh, you know, for big projects like this to open, but I've never had to plan to close one. While restaurants and a few other businesses have remained open, like the Boise Co-op and Petco, now many other retailers are opening their doors. We're cr- creating a, a, a plan for a higher level of cleaning to make the community feel safer when they come to the village. Um, we're encouraging the social distancing. We've moved furniture around in the shopping center so that it's not as close to, uh, you, know, to uh, you know, that people would feel comfortable sitting. We've added hand sanitizers. We've put barriers up at our concierge desk. Um, we've canceled any large scale event and are going to be moving into more smaller intimate events that uh, will continue to provide some entertainment at the village, but not uh, creating any large scale gatherings at the village. While the village is welcoming the crowds, they're working to keep everyone safe. We've added signage to around the property to remind people of, of what the protocols are. Um, and then we're working with our businesses that are opening so that they're delivering those same level of, of expectations inside their stores so the community feels safe that when they come out, they go, hey, I feel good going to the village and I feel like I feel good going into those various retailers because they're prepared and, and took the precautions into in, in, as a reality. Brian Morin, CBS 2 News.